Hello, everyone, and welcome to Happy Chat. This week, I have a, a TV star, brilliant actor, a bit of a baddie from the soaps, also does a lot of panto and things that you're about to find out about him. He's a, just a lovely guy. Please welcome Mr. Connor McIntyre. Hello, mate. Hey. Hey, guys. How are, How are you? you? How are you, buddy? You well? Yeah, good. And we'll explain... Welcome. While you're looking like this and where you are to all our viewers in a minute, but first off, yeah, it's been a couple of months since we were together at the Theatre Royal in Plymouth for Panto, and That's right. an experience never to be forgotten. Agreed, really good, really great experience. And uh, I, I know, and one we were very privileged to do as well, given the circumstances, uh, to be able to. You know, to actually put on a panto, put on a Christmas show for the people here. And that's thanks to Kudos and all the other guys who really pulled it, you know, together. We put that show in in what? In a, in a week? In a week. But, but Weeks, I have to say, as well as, yeah. I mean, there weren't many sets on stage, obviously, because you couldn't have yeah, too many crew members because of the, the COVID situation. But we yeah. had, like, COVID monitors who were checking up, making sure we didn't step out of line and stuff. Oh, but yeah, yeah. despite... All of that stuff, six foot away from each other on yeah. stage, audience separated and in mass, and it yeah. still felt like panto, didn't it? It did, yeah. And I, I and I, I asked a few people who'd been there. I said, you know, the the distancing was it was it uh, was it visible that you know the staging because because we we maybe felt being performance so the staging might feel a little bit you you know contrived, but of course it was because. That was the conditions under which we had to do it, but uh, nobody said to me, "No, it looked strange at all." They were, they, they said, "No, it looked great." So, and in many ways, it kind of was. It felt like not that I not, you know, I'm a relative newcomer uh, to panto, but it felt like, it felt like a, you know, old days panto. A lot of it was, you know, front cloth stuff. Yeah. Uh, you you know your gags and songs and you know so it it, it, it went along at, at, at some pace and uh, people really enjoyed it you know well we did sort of the epitome of the socially distant comedy routine didn't we we, we did, did yeah yeah Shirley Shaw sells sushi in the sushi <laughs> store and literally you were on one side of the stage and Les Dennis was on the complete opposite side of the stage. Uh, I was six foot away from uh, Les and then I would run across to you about six foot away from you. You deliver to me. I'd run back, deliver to him. But because of the way it was written, it just felt like that's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. A real, a, a real, uh, a, a, a real privilege as well to, you know, to be able to put it on, as you said before, you know, one of only, you know, a few able to go on. We were the last ones standing as well before we got closed down. What was it? Three days? Was it three days before we were due to three close? Yeah, so, three days. How many shows? We lost yeah. about six or seven shows, something like that. Six or seven shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, and a great. Yeah, we had a great, we had a great gang with us, didn't we? Yeah, I'm just gonna yeah, say that. Great. Yeah. And we're still in contact, and that is so lovely. Yeah, yeah. There was yeah, yeah. the magnificent Les Dennis, who I was very nervous about working with because he's like yeah. comedy icon. And also, yeah. I'd known that you and Les had done Panto together so yeah. at, a couple of times and had this relationship. So I'm like coming yeah. in thinking, well, I yeah. hope I'll be accepted. But yeah. you were lovely yeah. and warm. Simon yeah. Webb, have you worked with Simon before, Connor? I hadn't, no, but he was a delight, of course. Yeah, yeah. Just lovely. <laughs> Charlotte Haynes, Jenny Dow, oh, Lee brilliant. Harrison. Brilliant. Just a wonderful, wonderful cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I say, people backstage keeping us in line with, you know, our wonderful yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. company manager. It was, it was a real joy. So my yeah. question to you is, being a, a famous actor on soaps and all that, and we'll see, mm. we'll talk about mm. where that came from. To mm. go from that to Panto, was it something... Mm you wanted to do and you always had a desire for panto because some of us panto people tend to think that the legit actors look mm. down on us just a little bit i don't think they do so much now but were you really wanting to go into panto first time you did it i have to be honest with him les dennis is my panto mentor yeah, we, we shared the dressing room uh, you know coronation street and it was uh, les's wonderful partner uh, um Claire Hasseltine, who, who kind of first suggested, oh, 
Listen, you and uh, uh, suggested fellas, you and Connor to do the Ugly Sisters. It was after my run on on on, on Coronation Street, so I'd never actually thought about it. I think people forget I come from theatre, you know, many many moons ago, and I started quite late in, in the game anyway. So, but Pants was a whole different world. So Les called me. You'll enjoy this. He called me and said, Dave, "Can you sing?" I said, "No idea." He said, "Can you dance?" He said, "Can you dance?" I said, "No idea." He said, well, I've just pitched us for the Ugly Sisters uh, uh, for Manchester Opera House. So I said, well, you know, why not? Um, and it turns out that uh, it was a really, you know, really good pair. Of course, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Ben Nicholas was, was with us, or him and Les. And uh, I remember for the first uh, couple of days going, because it's a completely different language. I don't have to tell you. It's a completely different form. But uh, um, I, I was saying, why is this funny? And a wonderful director, Guy, Guy, Guy Unsworth, said to me, it's wonderful stuff that you're doing, Connor, but we can't hear you. We can't, you know, we can't, uh, we, we can't see you. Because I'm, I, you know, I'm doing the actors thing. I'm Turn the, the scene. dial up! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, he used the best analogy for me. We'll get onto that in a minute. I said, oh, you mean paint with the big brushes? He said, exactly. So, and, and I'll tell you, until you do something like Panso, I mean, I, I, you know, you do sense that some people can be a little bit sideways about it, but... I said, not for me. I said, it requires uh, everything I think an actor's got. It's just a different, you know, idiom. It's just a different, you know, to be out there singing, dancing, uh, you know, gagging. I mean, it's just great. And I didn't relevant old... and important, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, so uh, uh, you know, I love it. And in terms of... Uh, in terms of a performer, yeah, you just go, wow, what a, what, what, what a gift. And uh, so I may you continue. And respect for it, or did you have respect before you went into it? Were you. Well, I didn't really understand it. I, I would always respect performers anyway, as I do with most people who, uh, you, you know, we, we know, don't we? We, we know that with things look easy, they generally aren't. You know, uh, so so, uh, um, and of course I, I I I know, but it wasn't something that was on my mind. It wasn't something I thought about. And actually, by extension, I've never thought about musical theatre before. You know, right. I, I, and all of a sudden you experience this uh, music with script. And for people who've been in Pants or musical theatre, it sounds very naive, but you don't really understand that until you've done it. And it's such a it's such an immediate uh, uh, it, it's such a powerful exchange between you and the audience. So um, I, I, I love the uh, great, great, great for me, of course, you know, and ironically, of course, uh, you know, four months earlier, I'm villain of the year. And then, of course, me and Les won um, the best ugly sisters at the Great British Panto Awards of the year. So it's easy, this Panto Lark, it's easy. That's what you, that's what you, that's what you call, uh, that's what you call balance. So it was great and a real privilege. And as I say, to be, uh, to be with Les, who's a really, you know, old hand and a, 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 a true professional, a genuine nice guy, I mean. It doesn't get any. I'm Ben Ben Nicholas, of course. Yeah, of course. Did you find it exhausting? Because for when I worked with <laughs> Henry Winkler, the Fonz from mm. Abbey mm. in Milton mm. Keynes, he said mm. to me that this was the most exhausting discipline he's ever mm. done in, in mm. his entire career, and he'd done mm. like everything. So, mm. what, what, were you surprised how tiring it was? I I, I wasn't surprised. Um, because I, I, I think it's there. I think if you look, and I think if you're, although like the TV, the mechanical media can be quite different in terms of a lot of downtime. Uh, I, it is about the kind of energy that you bring to the party and something like a long running soap. Uh, for those people who are a bit sideways about that, I mean, the schedule is phenomenal. Of course. You know, and what, what, and what, what these actors produce out of a schedule that's so tight is, is actually amazing. Um, and some of the some of, some of the best actors, in my opinion, working in the industry are working on soaps, and it goes like a train. So I've never been a I've never been shy of a of a tough schedule. I, you know, I like to be at work. I feel very grateful when I'm at work, and when I'm you know when I'm not at work with Dad, I put as much energy into the studio where we are now. So um, I, it, it is demanding. There's no question about that, um, and it's you know sticks six days a week you know two shows a day or, or whatever it is but uh it's for a, it's for a period of time high and you, you know all of that so high, high intensity yeah the yeah biggest, yeah the biggest critics in the world 
kids as well. Mm. You know, and you can't pull the wool over their eyes. Like I was speaking to Eric Potts the other day, who writes a lot of panto, great panto day, and said, it, yeah. although you're talking rubbish, you have to do it truthfully. You have to do it truthfully. Although, and, and that, that of course, they know. And so I suppose the, the biggest challenge, really, for me, playing the two, this is, is not, uh, it was these, it's, I think it was six costume changes and the high heels, because my feet are <laughs> kind of, <laughs> my feet are kind of still recovering, you know. And all our partners in the world, they, you know, of our female partners, I kind of go, wow, how do you guys, you know, uh, uh, do these? And admittedly, ours are kind of not, not probably not considered high heels, but that was, the, that was the most telling kind of thing. You go, oh, yes, you know. And if the stage has a rake on it. So uh, it's been great for me. And a revelation in terms of, if we can talk in these terms, in terms of your uh, development as a performer, you know, to do that, this, it's a hot, it's a special place on its own. It's a special language, and there are specialist skills. I mean, I, I, I think I'm the unfunniest man that I know. And when I see you guys working, comics or les or you know people that not, I mean, I would ask uh, les about that and say, how come that works so well? You know, there's a dynamic all of its own. There's a structure all of its own. Well, so, we were um, quite deep on all that backstage, didn't we? The, yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the disciplines. <laughs> and I learned so much working yeah. with you, the disciplines yeah. that I don't have. And you were yeah. constantly asking, what about this, Andy? Could I try that? Yeah, um, yeah. And the yeah, three yeah. of us were like a little tag team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Suggestions. And it was, it was just lovely to, to watch you work. <laughs> there was one gag, I can't remember what it was, you did every yeah. night. And you never did it the same twice because you were searching, searching for the. I was, the, I, I was, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I suppose that that also was that when you when we when you talk about what we do in terms of performance, so to be unafraid of, and not that I'm particularly courageous, but to be unafraid to fail, you know, is kind of what we is because of what we do. So that one gag in particular, like it's, and, and I would say too far. Now I'm going to try this with tonight. See, but I mean, it would work at a medium level. But I never quite felt I'd kind of, you know, hit it just right. It could have been. It wasn't. It was you every night. You did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's he going to do with it tonight? So it's very interesting, isn't it? And that's what. what and that's what. And I suppose when you talk about something being live and being organic, you know, that's really the epitome of it. When it's, you, you know, and, it, and it's a response. It you can't take it again. No. No, so no, no, you can't. No, you can't. And it's there, and it's in that moment, and there, uh, you, you, you know, your courage will be there or not. You know, to, whether it's to push it, but uh, it, it revelation, the whole, the whole, whole different thing, a uh, whole different experience. And as I say, in terms of musical theatre, if you've never been in that world, the combination of text and uh, music, it's like wow. It's incumbent on us to kind of deliver that, yeah, exactly. energy and, and freshness, and yeah, all of that. So great. So first, first time I'd heard of you was as the uh, because I'm not um, a soap TV watcher per se. I hadn't, I didn't really know a lot about Pat Feeling. Since then, I've, I've watched you do it. Oh my God, you were evil on that man. You, <laughs> you really were nasty. And it, is it great playing the nasty? Well, I think it is, and I think most people that play villains go, "Oh, it's great." I, I, I mean, we could get we could get into into it where we go, well, you know, uh, um, psychologically we kind of go, I mean, as kids, you might be rooting for the bad guy all the time. So there's a bit of us. And I think, I, I mean, I, I, I always credit this, and this is not being uh, falsely modest, you know, there was such a great team of writers to write power feeling. Because that balance between somebody who's doing something so horrendous and but have a likability to him, an attraction, if not a likability, to go because I think after the initial responses to him, oh, he's vile, uh, was like, what's he going to be up to this week? And then when it, you know, if it, you know, of course, that uh, you're as a villain, your time is already written down, right? <laughs> uh, you've got, you, you 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 have to go. It's about when you go. So where uh, people's responses were, were interested in terms of the, the drama. Oh, we hate him, but we don't want him to go yet, was the trick. And that's an absolute credit to all, all of the writers that we had on Coronation Street to write somebody so awful. Yeah. Um, but make him, 
but you did have the, the warmth there. And he, he when mm. the bits that I've seen, he seemed very mm. depthy, if that's the right yeah. word. It wasn't, yeah, yeah. it wasn't just surface, buddy. And you no, said no, no. something fantastic to me backstage when we were talking about some gag and I suggested mm. a way of doing something. Mm. You said to me at the difference with acting in comedy is a director mm. can tell you what he wants to see, mm. but he, he doesn't tell you how to do it. Mm. <laughs> he tells you what he wants to achieve and yeah. it to you to produce yeah. <laughs> what yeah. he wants from it. So um, that's slightly different from comedy. I think mm. we, well, com comedians do have their own personas mm. that deliver in a certain way. But for an actor, it's it's mm. like a no-no to say to them, and deliver it like this, isn't it? Well, it, it kind of, it, 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 yeah, it depends. And all, all directors are very different as well. Yeah. I, I, I would say that uh, if the if the writing's good and uh, the, the character's embedded, I mean, our job is to deliver beyond the script. So, of course, we can read and remember it and deliver it. But our, and so in, in order that the director will go, Okay, a little less of that, a little more of that. And hopefully you're, you're both in tune with that. But I think the job of any actor is to take the script and then deliver beyond that. Give the, give the director all the options or give the editor all the options they need. And for me, I think the test is plausibility. Oh, you know, uh, and you can see some very extravagant uh, 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 performances, which are great to kind of witness and great to kind of do. But the believability factor, and always my question with 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 with, uh, with Pat Thielen was, how can I make this as believable as possible? Because you're dealing with uh, scenarios that, it, 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 in a normal sense, were, were, would be so unbelievable as to be. But we're in so planned. So again, we're in a particular idiom, like we are in Panto. We're in a different world. So um, it's how to make those extraordinary circumstances plausible and believable. And I, for the most part, you do, I mean, you know, you can't go far wrong with such great writing. But that's, that, that's how I see my job. So, and as you quite rightly point out, that's the director. Me. Yeah, yeah. I just try and get as close to that as you can within that kind of unbelievable kind of scenario. Yeah, plausibility stuff. All this happened for you. You were this massive TV star winning the award for the best body and that. And you hadn't been an actor that long when all that happened for you. When did you sort of... Well, I, I, start, I, I, started, I started very late. Uh, I started uh, acting when I was about 31 or two. So I was maybe about 34 or 5 before I did my first telly. And then I kind of uh, uh, guessed this and this and that and so ticked on like, like, like most people. And then... Uh, for ITV, I did uh, quite a few things. And then, um, and we'll probably get onto this in a minute, uh, I, I, as we're going through, I had gone to a painting class as an acting exercise. I had actually run into a painter who said something quite engaging to me about, about painting. I was researching a play. I was researching a Berkhoff play. So he'd said something to me that was quite intriguing. So I was off doing, I think it was Drop Dead Gorgeous or something. And I thought, I must go and find out what this is about. So I go and find a student of this paint, a wonderful lady called Louise Cornell, ran a little painting class over in, uh, in Cornwall. And um, that was it. I'd gone to this class. I hadn't put paint on a board since I was 10, you know. Wow. And uh, I got this shock up my arm from this experience. And it was literally painting a white object on a white background. It was like tonalities. And then... Um, that was it. The hook went in. So I remember calling my agent and saying, listen, uh, I'm going to step out for a little bit. This, this, uh, this painting thing's got under my skin. So if we can fit something in in the school holidays, it would be great. You know, so uh, 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 wonderful Vic was very understanding and kind of go, OK, cool. So uh, I went off to finally went to school. I could hear my mum, God rest her soul, saying we couldn't get the police to get you into school when you were supposed to go. Now at fifty, you now at fifty, you decide to go. So I went off to Plymouth University. I did uh, fine art, but I did two years of art history alongside that, and so I was deep, you know, deeply embroiled in the, in that. And then I got a call about uh, for Coronation Street, just for three episodes. So I thought, well, great, you know, it's a bit of paint money, and you know. 
Uh, um, I thought, I'll it. So I went and so off I go and did. And I'd had some invitations over the years. Uh, it just never worked out. So uh, I go and do the three episodes. And then, as you may or may not know, um, I think they, they thought, oh, this character's got some traction. So they brought me back with that. So that ended up with six months then on Coronation Street. My first thing when I was so awful to Anna and Owen, you know, the fabulous um, Ian Pulse and Davis and Debbie Rush, of course, you know, working with, do- working with those guys. So yeah. six months. And, uh, and then I thought, well, you know, that's that. So off I go back to my studies. I then had graduated with my uh, first class honours degree, can you believe it? My mum would be laughing her off. So um, <laughs> I went on then to do my master's. So, but a week after I graduated with my master's, Coronation Street called and said, would you like to come back and do some more? Wow. So that's when really the Pat Feeling story really rolled out, so to speak. Um, wow. So yeah, that's the story. So uh, again, like all of us, um, we can have well, you know to both oh, fairly late in life. Then the yeah, 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 yeah. I'm absolutely the wrong. I, 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 I can hear, I can hear my dad, my mum and dad saying, "Always the wrong way round with you, kid. You always do it the wrong way round." So, uh, through to form, yeah, I'm doing it the wrong way round. But what a, what an absolute blessing, what a privilege to be uh, involved in such an iconic show with such iconic characters. And no, no matter what, now when they talk about great great Corrie villains I, I mentioned in that you know and as you and I know as, as per, the precarious life that we live um, to be working mm. to be working as, a, 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 any a, any modicum of kind of recognition is a it's a privilege and it's a, and it's a miracle just to be in and living uh, in our in our game is is you know it's quite the miracle itself. So you, you have so, I could tell backstage talking to you every day with every performance was it was important. You're like us. You, you you know it was so important to you to get it right and and to give what you can give. So where what I want to say to you is before you found your painting and your acting to put your passions into. Yeah. What did you do with all that passion in the first thirty years of your life? Well, do you know uh, before before I uh, before I stumbled into uh, um, starting to get involved with the local theatre, I was actually selling American cars in in in, uh, in Germany. I, I, I for one time one time I was uh, I'm a, you know uh, uh, I was involved in boxing and coaching. So I've always been an enthusiast. I always think I believe this. You know, I think it was somebody like I think it was Frank Auerbach that said when he was asked for his advice to young artists. And he says, well, it's very presumptuous of me to offer advice about anything. But all I would say is this. Find what it is you want to do and do it like Hercules. Do it like Hercules. I like do that. Do it like Hercules. You know, just just involve yourself and, and give the full, you know, give the full. Because we don't have to be reminded. I don't want to get morbid or heavy. But, you know, life is short. You know, and too short to be so. If you are involved in something, if it, you know, it feels very ungrateful for me to have a studio like this and be wandering in, oh, a couple of hours here, a couple of hours there. That's what I do. Equally, the show, we know philosophically, you go, well, really, this is, this is it. This show is it. Then yeah. it's the next show, and it's the next show. You know, you, so looking up the road is. But you don't have the, the choice. It's in you. You know, you've got to do that. And when you, yeah. I mean, you had um, a heart attack. I think that's public knowledge. It's not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. You had a heart attack, and mm. it was real, really t- tough here. But mm. what, did that passion for what you do did, give you a, a purpose and a name? I've got, I've got to get back on the stage. I've got to paint again. Was it, was it a driving force? I mean, mm. did you just sit right back and and wait for the time to move forward again how, how did the convalescence go for you well i, I you know my, well i don't think I'm, I'm you know breaking any revelations here but well, my doctor's advice well you need to be off for six months and i was back at work in six weeks it was like really i'll tell you what you take six months off i'll go back to work you know i know it's i, I know it's some some ways it can be foolish but to have an enthusiasm about what you do you know, whatever, however modest that is. I mean, because I'm not, you know, uh, 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 you know, 
it's it might be accurate to some degree where you go well you know, famous television faces what well, for a time you are and you know and and that is that right and then and then some people are you know big and famous forever but fundamentally underneath all of that an enthusiasm and a drive for what it is you choose to do in life is really the key to it all so whatever it is that people choose to do yeah you, you know identify it which is probably the most difficult thing and yeah. then uh and do it like Hercules. <laughs> do yeah, it put, like Hercules. Your, yeah, yeah. Put right, your energy in. Just into. to explain to all our um, viewers who are watching this tonight, mm -hmm. uh, Connor mm -hmm. is in the Alamo, which is his very yes. own art studio. Now, yes. this, this was a dream of yours to create this. It was. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I'd like to say that, but every studio I've had, I've called the Alamo. Oh, have you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, uh, it's uh, it, it, it just reminds me now. I think Alamo translates as the shady glade, you know. But I always get very, very I, what I think are amusing answers when people ask, "Why is it called the Alamo?" <laughs> I say, "Well, you want the long answer or the short answer?" They say, "Well, give us the short one first. I say, "It's my favorite John Wayne movie." They said, "Is it really?" I said, "No, not really." They say, "What's the long answer?" I say, "Well, the long answer is." Down at the Alamo, there was a kind of land grab thing going on. Uh, um, and so uh, um, I consider my studio a kind of land grab because this studio was right in the middle of an industrial estate. It's the most incongruous situation. You know, mechanics and uh, exhaust pipe guy and all of this. But, and is it possible for me to flip it around? To come I would up? love you guys see? Does that work for you? your studio. It's your oasis, isn't it? It is my oasis. It's almost my... So, so if I just give you the roundabout, you tell me when you've kind of seen it or if I'm going too fast or whatever. No, that's great. So nice and slow because my wife would love to see this because she's an okay. artist. So it's had a little bit of a clean-up. Now, I have a friend of mine working in a very talented sculptor called Gary Scott. Yeah, he works over on that side of the room. Right. Um, it looks a little bit. Is that his uh, sculpture? Say again. Is that his sculpture there? Yeah, yeah, that's one of them. Yeah, he's working on he's working on stuff uh, at, at the moment. Um, and so or stuff this so you could paint? you can see some larger scale work that I make. Yeah. And I make uh, serial paintings. So these are the nine muses. You'll like this. Right. And these are, the, these are the nine muses that used to entertain the gods on Mount Olympus. And this so is the your top, work, yeah? Yeah, yeah. These are my paintings, yeah. Fantastic. All the paintings in here. All the paintings in here are mine. Wow. Uh, so up on the top right with the red figure is the uh, is dance. The Could blue one is... a little a, bit closer, Connor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the top right one is uh, uh, with the red figure across it is dance. The next one to it is sacred poetry. Yeah. The one in the middle is the one in the middle is music. The one in the on the blue one is astronomy, tragedy, history, uh, epic poetry. So the nine muses. So I so I do serial you know serial uh, 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 paintings. So this is the Alamo as the long vision. Wow. Yeah. Do you lose yourself like for days? I, well, I, I, I'm going to spin back to me now. Uh, All right, love. I, All right. I, I, yeah, I do. I, I do. I mean, and I have to say, you know, just in terms of my gratitude, imagine, uh, imagine having, you know, during lockdown, which has been immensely tough for for a lot of people. Um, you know, I come uh, to to the studio and, uh, you know. Do my do 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 my thing, yeah. You know, yeah. so I feel very lucky to have that, and I feel very, you know, very sorry. We have to, well, obviously, we can't, well, I'm not we can't have it open to to people coming and uh, anything else, but to come in and there, uh, it is it is an oasis, but it's also a creative, uh, yeah. you know. So cre this is in um, in Plymouth, yeah. This is in Plymouth, yeah. Right, and yeah. do you yeah. give lessons, art lessons, um, in your studio? Do you, you know, uh, myself and my partner who set up uh, um, the Alamo, we we were mentoring students for for a long time, and I still have I have people that come and will ask about 
uh, you know, on our practice, because sometimes it's just nice to have a conversation with somebody who's got. So I hesitate to put myself as, although I'm a, an associate lecturer here and there, which means I've got my, you know, I've got my stripes and I can go and talk. Uh, I can go and talk about it. But interestingly enough, I probably get as many performers who come and want to talk about, you know, acting. Now, I hesitate, again, well, I hesitate to say, oh, what, what do I know? But at least uh, we, you and I can talk about the industry to young people. Yeah. We can kind of share our notes and go, well, this is what, you know, this is what I, I found out. This is what, you know, I found out. So um, so uh, I love the Alamo for that. So it, it is a space for, this is space for that. And I, this is why I love. This is why I loved your your the, this idea of this uh, uh, cast yeah. that you're doing because contacting people outside of that, you know, uh, the Alamo was kind of one of those places. It's here where you know it's uh, I, I, I we fund it, you know, so it's not. So we 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 we, we do what we like here, and uh, uh, you, you know, we have people coming in. It's, we're not beholden to anyone. Can I go a bit lateral with you? Um, yes, I've always considered music and comedy to be inextricably yes. linked because of, yeah. of timing and expression and, and <laughs> rhythms, etc. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, hopefully you, you'll agree with that, but is there a, a connection in, in your heart and in your head between mm -hmm. painting and acting? Yes. Explain and, and 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 the uh, I, I think the same fundamental of course it, as a general as a general brushstroke but number one I would say the first rule that applies to both of them is get out of your own way. Explain right? that. Well, you know, it, 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 to an actor's job is to serve the script. The common perception is you go and you deliver your particular flavor on, you know, it's not. That's the job. But uh, And so it, I work in an abstract medium. I come from figuration. I come from portraiture. But I found through my uh, studies and through that actually I'm much more of a thinker than I ever thought I was. And that's what you that I think that's the real treasure from from an art practice is you discover more about yourself. So, I, I, you know, I, that, that's what I discovered about myself. And, and in terms of script, I'm analytical as well, I discover. When I, for one time, you know, I used to like to think, well, I'm very instinctual. And I'm, hopefully I'm that as well, where you'll take an improvisational moment. But so, so the same rules apply. But it isn't, isn't it true, Andy, that they are methods of communication? Yeah. And trying to communicate something whether through colour, through an image, through, I mean, that's, that's what painting is, right? Uh, uh, you would say, or, make, or image making is, or any art making is, communicating something. Comedy, uh, you know, at one level can, be, can seem very light. Actually, it's quite profound uh, comedy. It, it's like the, the, shared... is as important, the feeling is almost more important than the material in, in both genres, yeah? Yes, and so I agree. So I agree with you that that there's an inextricable link, and I always have this music on here. Music, music, rhythm, patterns. You know, these are all these are all very human, uh, very human activities. Yeah. And, I, I, and I wonder that that's why, and that's why I, I, I never have. Unlike you, you have a skill for writing. You see, I um, I never. It doesn't operate very strongly in me. That right. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, I've got anything in particular to say. All I can do is reflect on my responses to to the time that we're living in, or how I'm feeling through 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 the painting. And of course, as an actor, you you're given the material to explore those things through somebody else's eyes, if you will. So yeah. um, I agree with everything you said about the music and the comedy. And I think it's amazing how many famous actors paint. Really. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you start to go through, I, I won't list them off, but it, it, it's a very uh, um, sympathetic activity, I think. I yeah. shall, when we, when we go to Barcelona, when, when we can go again, Michelle likes to go to the museums and then we go, 
go to see the Picasso Museum. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the thing for, for people that, you know, I'm not an artist or a painter mm. or anything, but mm. I, I, I love to watch it. Shell probably gets more out of it mm. than the museums. Mm. But when, when I started, the revelation to me is when I started looking at Picasso's work, is the early mm. stuff is what mm. we would see as before he went a bit abstract. It was all traditional mm. and it was mm. exact and brilliant. And then mm. you could see the derivations where he suddenly did a version of that first picture and then mm. a, a third version, which was a version of the second picture and, mm. and carried it right down the line. Is, is that how you got into the abstract? Did you start off doing the lines properly and then just gradually? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good question. And I, I have a, uh, um, I hope your viewers don't get too bored of this, but I have a real attraction to figurative kind of work. Let's say, you know, uh, 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 Francis Bacon treatment of the figure. And, uh, you know, you go back to, and I did art history as well. So I'm a huge fan of, you know, of looking back. However, um, for me to represent something as a retinal experience, in other words, painting something that looks like something, or the hyper-realists have a whole different uh, a critical underpinning for what they do. Um, I, you know, I live more in the idea, I live more in a dream kind of landscape. You know, I think I'm a landscape painter. I just think I paint a different kind of landscape. And I'm also very interested in this idea, which is now if people see my work, they'll see a matrix work through the whole works. There's always a grid in there because I'm attracted to the idea that now the most important language on the planet is code. So that's a very interesting idea. And, I, and, I, and I'm deeply interested in what goes on uh, technologically and scientifically. I'm reminded of, uh, of an essay by Baudelaire called The Painter of Modern Light. The essential proposition is artists, whoever they are, should be responding to the times that they live in. Yeah. So yeah and so, <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, and so here we are I'm going back to Picasso. There's a, uh, a giant, uh, I mean, to really understand Picasso's journey. Uh, but there's a giant, there's a man who changed the face of sculpture, ceramics, painting, over and over, reinvented himself, you know, made probably the greatest anti-war painting uh, uh, ever. A complex uh, uh, character, of course, as most great, great artists are. But uh, then, So does that answer your question? Uh, the, the, the draw toward abstraction, let me just be clear about that, is... My thinking, I'm much more of a thinker than I ever thought I was. So there's an awful lot of thinking about the work I make. All right. Does it make so it any the grid, is that, yes. is that a <laughs> subliminal way of trying to ground what's on the, the page? No, it's the idea. It, 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 it is an armature for the painting to hang off, but it's, it's, it, it, it's the idea that now we live in a world of bits and bytes. Code, whether that be genetic code, computer code, is now the language of the moment. And like I often say uh, in, in, in my more, uh, in my more um, humorous moments, I say, there are only grids. That's all there are, grids. Uh, so that's my motif, if you like. Yeah. You know, some artists might have a particular kind of flavor, but there's all, whether the whether the grid is foremost or not. Some and, and actually, some recent paintings I'm making now, you have to struggle really to see the matrix in there. But it's the armature on which that's all. It's a it's an armature on which I hang it on because the dialogue within the paintings is around that. Well, you you're know. in your happy place there, mate, aren't you? I mean, I yes. can tell it, it yeah, just yeah. flows out of you. Now, the impossible question. Yes. Okay, so you you love your your life and the opportunities that you get and all the experiences you had, you have had and are continuing to have. Mm -hmm. You paint, you act. Mm -hmm. If you had to lose one of them, <laughs> which one? All things being equal, and I don't know whether this is. Uh... I don't know whether this is an age thing, but all things being equal, I mean, obviously, you know, one subsidizes the other, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, to, I haven't got a lifestyle to maintain. I mean, my my my, uh, my priorities really are to keep myself uh, fed and warm and watered, and to keep the studio uh, uh, going and to keep making paintings, right? Yeah. So, um, but if you put a gun to my head. <laughs>
I think you would struggle to get me out of the Alamo. Yeah. Well, it, but to be honest, it was a silly question because that's too... I don't think it's a silly question. It, mm -hmm. it makes up the whole, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a silly question. All things being equal, I think the... Uh, and maybe this is a, maybe this is a, a, an age thing where... Because I reached 60 not that long ago. And, I, I, and, I, and uh, yeah, and I kind of went, wow, I made it, you know despite all expectations, but I think, I think there's a saying, uh, I think it's a Chinese saying somewhere that says, painting is an old man's game. And by that, I mean, uh, there's a contemplative aspect to it that, you know, the earlier days, if we can use Rembrandt as an example, there are early Rembrandts which are so phenomenal. that It's pure flash. This is Rembrandt saying, and look at what I can do. Boom. Follow that. Yeah. <laughs> but the later, the later self-portraits, for example, where he's lost everything. He's lost the love of his life. He's lost his money. He's lost his reputation. He's no longer fashionable. Are, are some of the most potent paintings I think I've ever seen. They're the most... Because uh, um, he's putting his, his history thing. into the paintings. There's no flash. There's no other consideration than the painting. Then him himself, the other one of the customers to go, hey, you wanna you wanna paint it? Look at the way I can paint mink. No one paints, you know, no one paints fair like you. you do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a contemplative uh, 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 point, I think, and maybe the age. So sorry to answer your question. Uh, yeah, if you put a gun to my head, I don't think you would see. I don't think you would see me out of the Alamo. <laughs> but until uh, until uh, until my uh, uh, until my um, uh, and I love both equally. I love the camaraderie of being on that, and I love, uh, uh, you know, interpreting scripts. I lo I really do. I, I love it. I mean, I, you know, I get really excited when I see great scripts. I want to see great, you know, great performances. But as I say, it's a margin call. But if you were to put a gun to my head and say, choose, I don't think you would get me out of the Alamo. I think I would be... Do you know what uh, I'd love to see? I'd love to see a play about the life of a great artist and you play that on stage i'm with you brother i'm no with you send send him an email D shall i, I write it for you <laughs> why not why not is the question Can I I it's very funny it's it's very funny you say that because uh, i i said to I said to my gang not that long ago you know what we need now she said, what? I said, we need a good script about a fat Liverpoolian painter. That's what we need. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, can I just say thank you very much for uh, letting us into your life, into your studio, into your thoughts, into your passion. A pleasure. And you, you're full on. You live it full on, don't you, mate? There's no other way, really, is there? No other way to do. Squeeze it. Squeeze the, squeeze, squeeze the lemon hard. And find yeah. what it is you want to do and do it like Hercules. You know, Got, you know. Do what you want inside this grid. Make the most of it. For, to, to, find, to find what it is you love to do is a real treasure. And then, yeah. and then to be able to you know, have the good health and everything else to do it. I know uh, uh, it's difficult in some circumstances, but to find that's a real treasure. It really is, the, uh, it really is life. That really, in my um, opinion, what do I know? But in my opinion, from two of the happiest and luckiest people on the planet, uh, you and me, thank you so much for joining. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Bless you. And I can't wait to watch this back because because I'm thinking of questions. I'm thinking, oh, what did he just say then? So I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't want to miss any of it. Love your art, love your performing when we can get back out there and do it again. God willing, yeah, God yeah. willing. Yeah. And mate, it, it's, you know, I think you'll be a friend for life now. I, I love working with you and I love talking to you. And I'll speak to you again really soon. Thanks for joining me on a happy chat. A pleasure. Thanks very much for inviting me on. I hope it, uh, hope your, your viewers enjoy. Thanks for the opportunity, man. Great to yeah. see you, Andy. Thanks, mate. Thank you. You take care.